Cut day is here, which I probably shouldn't be saying that happily because it's actually kind of sad. A lot of NFL players are having their dreams cut short with the Chicago Bears, but cut day is here. The Chicago Bears have trimmed their roster down to 53 men, and let's talk about who the Bears cut and who they kept. What's going on, guys? I'm back with another Chicago Bears off-season update video, news update video, which I'll be doing anytime the Chicago Bears news going on. So subscribe to my channel if you guys want my thoughts on my opinions on latest breaking chicago bears news and in this video i'll be going over all the cuts that the bears made by the 3 p.m deadline today so the bears had to go down to 53 men which they did they cut a lot of people and they could be cutting even more players in the coming days if they do want to add any players on the waiver wire which i'm pretty sure they will because the bears actually have the number one waiver wire priority in the nfl this year because we finished with the worst record in football last year and fun fact guys the number one order Number one priority does not go away after we use a claim after we get a player. So, for example, if tomorrow we, you know, claim whoever whoever we want to claim, we still would have the number one waiver wire order for this entire time. Like any player we want on waivers, we are guaranteed to get them if we do put a claim in for that player. But obviously, we're going to have to cut players if we do want to add more. So, you know, this roster is not fully set just yet. And also, I do want to say with the wa waiver wire um, stuff, like, not every single player that gets cut goes to waivers. It's only um, players that are not vested veterans just yet. So mostly players on the rookie contracts, they're the players that hit the waivers, um, mostly young players, right? So, you know, we're not going to be getting any, like, stars probably on waivers, but we could be adding some decent depth, hopefully, you know, in the coming days on the waiver wire. But talking about which players the Bears cut today, okay? I'll be talking about who we cut and then going over the roster at the very end and let's begin all right so I'll read the whole list and then talk about the most notable cut players at the very end obviously i won't be talking in great detail about every single player but going over the list so micah baskerville travis bell robert burns stephen carlson making clark kellen dyche deander eastland demarquis gates travis gibson jalen harris bobby haskins deanthony jones josh lug roy mabiteka michael ojimudia Lachlan Pitts, Ravion Roy, Logan Stenberg, Davion Taylor, Braylon Trahan, Kindle Vildor, Barrington Wade, Michael Walker, Kendall Williamson all were cut by the Chicago Bears. Waived, I should say. And then the players that got um, cut that are actually vested veterans, so players with at least four accrued NFL seasons, Andrew Brown, Aviante Collins, Doris Fountain, Nathan Peterman, Greg Stroman Jr., and Asimba Webster were all cut. And talking about the most notable guys so i want to briefly highlight some of them so travis bell obviously was our seventh round pick this year which ryan pulls and everybody was super high on he had a pretty good preseason but it was going to be very hard for him to actually crack this roster i think he should be guaranteed to be coming back on practice squad because you know he wasn't obviously a big name um coming from a smaller school the only guy that got drafted from his school ever into the nfl so he should be back on practice squad not too worried about that Talking about Travis Gibson, though, okay? This one I know some people are mad about because Gibson had a pretty phenomenal preseason. He seemed to be, you know, looking like he could be great depth for the Bears this year. But news broke out during the last preseason game that Travis Gibson wanted a trade and the Bears had put him very low on the depth chart. So I could understand why if that were true. But Travis Gibson said himself on Twitter um, just today that he did not demand a trade. So... Not sure what the truth is, but regardless, both sides seem like they didn't really want each other. Um, Gibson, I'm sure, was kind of pissed off, obviously, that he was so low on the depth chart, even behind guys like Rasheem Green, who haven't really done anything in preseason. So the Bears did try to trade Gibson, uh, reportedly, but they could not get anything for him, um, obviously, because he is, you know... A backup edge that's coming off a bad year that only has one year left on his deal. You're not going to get much more than like a seventh round pick for a player like that. So kind of sucks we couldn't get like a seventh round pick at least. But I wish Travis Gibson the best of luck. He had some great moments with the Chicago Bears. A fourth round pick by Ryan Pace. Back in 2020, he had seven sacks in 2021. Seemed to be on the upswing of his career. Seemed to be, you know, building towards a good future. But unfortunately, 2022 was a bad year for him in this new scheme. He didn't do much of anything, and maybe he's going to be looking to return now to a 3-4 scheme elsewhere in the NFL. So wish him the best of luck. Going to the next player then, I do also want to talk about Kindle Vildor because he also was a Ryan Pace pick back in 2020 that started in 2021, did really bad obviously that year in 2021, but got a lot better in 2022, I would say. And I thought the Bears might keep him as like the CB 
you know, CB5, CB6, but it's clear, you know, after they drafted two cornerbacks in the draft um, in, in rounds two and round five that they weren't the highest like Kinda Wilder, which I, you know, I can understand that, right? Because even though he got better last year, he's still not anywhere close to a good or great cornerback. And he also probably isn't going to be getting much better than what he is at this point in his career. So it didn't make sense to get rid of him and go with the younger guys. So, you know, that makes sense. And then talking about Michael Walker, this is a guy that the Bears did sign um, a few weeks back that, you know, started with the Falcons last year. A lot of people were high on him, but with how deep the Bears are as linebacker, it was kind of difficult for a guy like this to make the roster just because the Bears have studs at linebacker all over the roster. I mean, that's how much Ryan Poles has upgraded that position where a guy that had 100 tackles last year like Michael Walker cannot even crack um, the roster. So that's that. We also cut seventh round pick Kendall Williamson that we sucked in the draft this year. I'm pretty sure it's going to be coming back on practice squad. So not too worried about him leaving. He was a seventh round pick out of Stanford, not not very highly scouted. So the Bears should be able to get him back, but he's not making the roster. Um, the final 53 that is. And talking about some of the best of veterans, I only want to talk here about Nathan Peterman because they should be getting him back probably on practice squad. But it does say a lot about Tyson Bajan that the UDFA out of Shepard, a D2 school, made the roster while the veteran Nathan Peterman is on practice squad. Usually it's the opposite. So pretty cool that Tyson Bajan has officially now claimed that QB number two spot. I mean, hats off to him. That's a fantastic story. And then Nathan Peterman, you know, if he's ever going to have to be brought up, it's it's only going to be because of injuries, which is how it should be because Nathan Peterman is not known to be a great quarterback. So... Those are all the cuts, but then let's talk about the Bears' final roster then, okay? Just briefly talking about each position and what I think about each position. So, um, quarterback, so the Bears kept two quarterbacks. By the way, this is from the Bears' website, so shout out to uh, Larry Meyer on the Bears' website for writing all this. But Bears kept two quarterbacks, Justin Fields and Tyson Bajant. Obviously, I like Justin Fields. I like the potential of Tyson Bajant, so pretty solid QB room if Justin Fields can take that next step. Pretty young QB room too, though, okay? We're going with two guys that are really really young so not having that vet in there you know could be a little bit of a concern but i'd rather roll with the potential of tyson bajan than have a guy like peterman on the squad because we all, we all know that peterman he he is what he is at this point like he's not going to get much better than what he is and at least bajan does give you that you know potential so that's a qb room talking about the running back room then we got deontay foreman khalil herbert travis homer and roshan johnson very solid running back room i love all of our backs I mean, we could have one of the deepest running back rotations in the NFL. We kept one fullback, Kari Blasengame. If he gets hurt, we don't really have a backup there, but I'm pretty sure Robert Burns, the backup fullback, should be coming back on practice squad. So got one fullback. We also kept three tight ends in Cole Komet, Mercedes Lewis, and Robert Tunyon. I really love the versatility we have there in all those three guys. We got Cole Komet that can both, you know, pass, catch, and block pretty decently we got mercedes lewis the blocker the pure blocker robert Tunney, the pure pass catcher so i think it's a very well-rounded tight end room nine offensive linemen lucas patrick cody whiter doug kramer nate davis tevin jenkins jatari carter larry borum braxton jones and darnell wright and i guess this list doesn't count for the trade that we made yesterday for dan feeney the center slash guard so one of these guys probably on the offensive line on this list is going to be cut so i'm i'm assuming doug kramer probably is going to be cut because he all he's also dealing with the injury so you know feeney should replace doug kramer uh, most likely but otherwise it's a pretty decent offensive line the only thing giving me pause is that injuries are a big concern with this group because we've had so many guys already been injured on this group in in practice and in, in training camp so you know, injuries are going to be a big concern, but this is a pretty deep offensive line, I would say, with guys like Jatari Carter, Larry Borum having pretty fantastic preseason showings. We also got Dan Feeney, too. So, you know, more optimistic about the offensive line this year than it was last year. Talking about the receivers, then, we kept six of them. Chase Claypool, Velas Jones, Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore, Equinemia, Sam Brown, and Tyler Scott. Not too much of a surprise here. Very solid group top to bottom. Honestly, one of the best receiver rooms the Bears have had in a very long time. When you look at all the talent combined from top to bottom, DJ Moore, Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney got a solid, you know, number four to develop in Tyler Scott. You know, EQ Sam Brown was starting for us last year and now he's our receiver number six. Vilas Jones, you know, with all the problems he has, he still is one of the most dynamic athletes on the field if he can just hang on to the football, right? So, you know, pretty solid receiver room. Talking about the defensive linemen then, they kept nine of them. Rasheem Green, Terrell Lewis, Yannick Ngakwe, Dominique Robinson, Demarcus Walker, 
Andrew Billings, Javon Dexter, Justin Jones, and Zach Pickens. And, you know, shout out to Terrell Lewis, by the way, for making the roster, okay? This guy coming over from the Los Angeles Rams, where he was cut by them, um, went to Alabama, dealt with so many injuries, but, you know, had a fantastic preseason for the Chicago Bears, racked up so many sacks, probably was the best defensive player on the Bears this entire preseason. So, shout out to him rocking the number 52, just like Khalil Mack did, but... The defensive line definitely is a little bit worrisome, probably the weakest position on the Bears roster just because we have so much unproven talent there. You know, guys like Dominic Robinson, Rasheem Green, you know, Jervon Dexter, Zach Pickens haven't really proven themselves too much in the NFL just yet. Obviously, Jervon and Pickens are rookies, so we'll see what they can do, but it is definitely a, you know, at least on paper, a little bit of a weak defensive line. Hopefully, they can prove a lot of people wrong and be much better than their talent suggests so far but looking at the linebackers then we got five of them so dylan cole tremaine edmonds tj edwards jack sanborn noah sewell very talented very deep linebacking group and they only kept five which does make sense right because in the nfl nowadays you're going to be a nickel half the time not even have three linebackers on the field so only kept five of them defensive backs then they kept 10 josh blackwell kyla gordon jalen johnson jalen jones Terrell smith tyrick stevenson jaquan brisker elijah hicks eddie jackson and AJ Thomas and I love all of our defensive backs man I mean probably the deepest position besides linebacker on the Bears roster and very upgraded over the past two years in which Ryan Poles has used up a lot of draft capital to address this secondary and then specialist Cairo Santos Trenton Gill and Patrick Scales Patrick Scales is still holding on strong I think he's almost 40 at this point but still on the Chicago Bears you know love to have him back and that is the entire Chicago Bears roster, at least as of now. Let me know what you guys think about this roster in the comments down below. I will be making videos on the Bears waiver wire claims in the coming days as well. So be on the lookout for more um, content about that. This final roster is not fully final just yet. It's going to be final only on September 10th when we take on the Green Bay Packers. But overall, I really do like this roster, at least compared to last year. It still has a lot of holes on it. It's definitely not a Super Bowl contending roster, but I still think this roster... If Justin Fields can take the next step up to being a good quarterback, at least a above average quarterback, above average thrower of the football, I should say, this team could win a lot more games than people are thinking it can. Okay, so far in the media, I've been seeing people suggesting the Bears are going to be winning, you know, six games, five, six, seven, something like that, right? Because we, we finished with the worst record in football last year. So people, are, people don't have high expectations really for the Bears this year besides for noted Bears fans like Adam Rank but I'm telling you man this team could win eight nine ten games if the quarterback situation is better than people think it is and if the Bears defense can be better than people expect it to be um, which is certainly possible with the defensive minded coach Matt Eberflus that has a lot more talent this year than he had last year so leave your comments down below guys as always bear down